good morning. My name is Saurav Bakshi. I'm here to present work uh, done here at Purdue University on securing federated learning on WIMPy devices. In other words, IoT devices, edge devices, sensor nodes, and so on. Uh, this is a fairly recent work, ongoing work, and uh, done jointly with uh, the graduate researchers Josh Akul Pranjal and collaborators at Wisconsin, Yin, IIT Bombay, Diplop, and colleagues here, Shomali and Chiang. So there has been a lot of emphasis on attacking federated learning. So the two broad classes of attacks which are within scope of our work are data poisoning attacks, where you go in and you target the data on which the model is being learned, and you poison in a strategic manner uh, some of the data items. For example, you flip the labels of some of the data items. The second class of attacks is the model poisoning attack, which is usually untargeted in the sense that I just want to degrade the accuracy of the model rather than specifically on some classes. And uh, the model poisoning attack really gets at the target of the problem rather than the indirect way of changing the data. And an attack this pushes away the global model from the global optimum. By the way, the slide deck is available at the link that is shown here. So in the case of untargeted uh, model poisoning attack, the threat model that we consider is C out of the M models can be compromised. Up to C out of the M models can be compromised. Uh, this is considered uh, the most damaging attack to federated learning training with compromised clients as of now. And the attacker can force these clients to send crafted gradient updates to the central server. The clients can collude in arbitrary ways and the clients also have knowledge, of course, of the aggregation scheme that is being employed at the server. So within this context, there are two kinds of threat models which are relevant. One is the partial and the second is the full. In the partial knowledge scenario, the malicious nodes do not know the communication between the benign nodes and the server. In the full knowledge scenario, the malicious nodes know about that as well. Of course, in both of these, the malicious nodes can behave in arbitrary manner. So how bad does it get? It turns out it gets pretty bad. Uh, if on the x-axis you have the percentage of compromised worker devices and on the y-axis we have the error rate on the test data. So higher that value is, the worse it is. So we find that at the no attack case and in simpler models, simpler attack models like Gaussian, uh, the error rate stays pretty low. But if you have this kind of undirected model poisoning attack, then the protocols break down fairly quickly. And they break down even when some secure aggregation techniques are being used. And in some of these cases, they break down even with as few as 5% of the client devices being malicious. So the key idea behind the attack, why it succeeds so drastically is that it looks at the sign of the gradients being communicated by the clients. And rather than change the magnitude of the gradients only, it changes the sign. It flips the gradient in a way that moves the model away from the global optima toward which all the learning is trying to converge toward. And the magnitude is also crafted in a careful way by solving an optimization problem so that the attack stays stealthy. And there are two kinds of attacks, two classes of attacks here, corresponding to the two different kinds of secure aggregation mechanisms that are used. So, the, when we looked at this, the fundamental reason why this kind of attack seems to succeed is that secure aggregation techniques today only look at the magnitude of the gradients that are being communicated. If on the other hand, you also look at the direction in which the model is moving, the hope is that you could do better. So for example, if the model is flip-flopping and seesawing between in two directions, then that is bad, even in a benign setting, but that also gives you a red flag that there are possibly malicious or compromised clients which are at play. So the fundamental insight behind the defense is that in a gradient descent like uh, setting, a large number of collective gradients being flipped in an epoch by a large number of clients is very, very unusual. It's not expected in the benign condition. Therefore you track how the gradient flips are happening and with the right kind of design where you're not going after greedy decision-making process based on just a single epoch, but based on state that you have collected on the clients over multiple epochs, you can flag either malicious clients or at least misbehaving clients. So here's some pictorial representation. So on the green, what you have are the flip scores from the benign clients. And on the red, you have the flip scores from malicious clients. And the intuition here is that the flip scores from the malicious clients are going to be higher. However, there is going to be 
non-trivial amount of overlap uh, because uh, as benign clients are trying to converge toward a global optima, they are going to go through peaks and valleys. And therefore, you are going to have gradient flips even in that case. Therefore, using a simple threshold kind of a scheme is not going to be able to work out. So the trajectory of any optimizer in a complex learning problem has to move through these peaks and troughs. And therefore, a high flip score on individual epochs by individual clients or even by groups of clients may not be malicious. So now let's bring in the challenges of working on these WIMPy devices. So by WIMPy devices, for some specificity, you can think about these embedded or mobile devices, which are uh, equipped with the mobile GPUs. And the NVIDIA Jetson Nano and Jetson TX2 may be considered to be uh, what's available yesterday and what's available today. And the Xavier's are the ones which are going to become mainstream in the next year or so, I would say. Uh, the challenges are threefold. One is that the models often do not fit in the memory of these devices. These devices have only a few tens of gigabytes of memory. Uh, they have variable speeds of operation, even within the same family because of natural variations, because they don't handle contention very well. They have various speeds of execution and they have variable network connectivity. The wireless link quality varies, oftentimes fairly unpredictably. So the solutions to working on the WIMPy devices are first of all, you distill the knowledge from the heavyweight models into the lightweight models, and you do that at the server. Then you fine tune the models at these uh, client devices, and the fine tuning can be just fine tuning the final layer or the final few layers in some cases. And you allow, allow for asynchronous updates from the clients because of the two reasons I mentioned, variable execution speed and variable network connectivity. So these are early indicators of uh, promise, uh, in this case, we keep track of the reputation of the clients rather than reacting on what the client is doing on every individual epoch. And over time, if you set up your reputation mechanism correctly, the benign nodes reputation goes up, the malicious nodes reputation goes down. So then you can do one of various forms of weighting by the reputation scores. The second one is just the time that it takes in order to do this kind of decentralized federated learning. So here we are doing activity recognition learning. And we do find that if you do uh, everything at a centralized server, then the times are much lower, but you often don't have the flexibility or the luxury of being able to do that. Therefore, you are forced to use clients. And what you can do there is, as I said, do knowledge distillation and then fine tune at the clients. And also if you do everything synchronously, then the time really shoots up because now you are bound by the slowest guy. Therefore, it's better to do it in an asynchronous manner. And uh, even with adaptive attacks, of course, in any of these kinds of secure mechanisms, you have to worry about adaptive attacks, which are aware of your defense technique. We find that this kind of defense is able to thwart even adaptive attacks. And the fundamental reason behind that is adaptive attacks also will need to maintain stealthiness, and that blunts the effectiveness of the attack. So the takeaways from this line of work is one's federated learning at the sensor nodes or at the edge nodes is a growing phenomenon. And I think it's going to become more and more important over time. You have to design for the throughput, for the energy consumption, as well as for the security. Some new kinds of security threat models come into play when you are doing learning on the edge. The solution idea that we are, uh, we are exploring is can we use patterns of the gradient updates to determine malicious nodes? Uh, and these design exemplars that seem to hold promise here is account for asynchronous updates for the clients, account for local data patterns, because based on the spatial uh, placement of these nodes, they're going to have different kinds of data patterns. So based on that, you can also try to identify, detect, and then identify which are the malicious nodes. And then whenever possible, offload work to the servers and then do things like fine tuning on the final few layers at the client. That's it. Uh, happy to hear questions and comments. Thanks.